So today we're going to cover off how to do uh, remediation with a final quiz question. And what I have on my screen here is a project file that I've built sort of the skeletal structure of. And we'll add some stuff to it today so you can see how this is done. So I have a title page, no surprise there. And I have a page with a video contained on it. And I've got two buttons on the bottom here. I've got a next button, which will simply take you to the next slide. But I also have a return to quiz button, and I'm going to apply uh, some adjustments to its on success action. But for starters, I've made it not visible in output, and you'll see why uh, in a little bit. Next, I have a little summary page. Are you ready for the quiz? Click next to begin. And then I have a quiz question. Now I've filled in a, a proposed quiz question for this particular project, but other than adding two additional answers, I've left all the settings for my quiz properties panel exactly the same. So we haven't done anything there to customize this yet. And then of course the standard quiz results slide that we all expect to see at the end of our project. So let's start at the top. So this is pretty straightforward as nothing needs to be done to your title page. Here's where the content begins. It's important to note within your project where the content is for each individual question in your final evaluation. Now, what I need to do first of all is I need to uh, set up a, an action for this return to quiz button. So on success, we actually have within Adobe Captivate, there is a return to quiz action. And you'll see how this runs in a little bit. I'm just gonna leave that as it is. Again, this button is not visible in output at present. So I need to now create um, an on enter action for this particular slide. So what we're going to do is on enter, we're gonna execute advanced actions. And I've already built this and I'll share it with you now so you can see what it contains. There's a system variable in Adobe Captivate that returns either a zero or a one, depending on whether the user has entered the quiz or has started the quiz. And this uh, particular system variable is CP Info Quiz Scope. And so I've created a very simple advanced action that says if CP info quiz scope is equal to one, then we're going to show that return to quiz button. Else, or otherwise, if you will, we're going to hide that button. So essentially what's going to happen is this little advanced action will check to see whether the user has started the quiz or not. And if they have, it's going to show the return to quiz button. Now I'm going to use this to hide the next button as well. So I'm selecting the next button and the return to quiz button. And I'm just going to align them in such a way that you can't see the next button if the return to quiz button is available. So that's it. This will run and check for that, uh, that va variable uh, or that value uh, every time we visit this particular slide. Next, we have our summary slide or our get ready for the quiz slide, whatever you wish to call it. And now we have our multiple choice question. So what are the three types of files that Paul demonstrates embedding into uh, an Adobe Captivate eLearning project? There's one correct answer. Now this strategy would work for, I believe, every single quiz type. So I'm using multiple choice here, but you could use uh, uh, a matching question or fill in the blank or true false or uh, anything like that. It obviously won't work with a rating scale or Likert question and um, and it won't work with drag and drop per se uh, because technically a drag and drop, um, I'd have to think about that. Maybe we could make it work with drag and drop, but for today we're going to talk about multiple choice. So here's my answers. The first answer is correct. And uh, one of the things that you probably want to do is customize your caption message, in particular the one for incorrect. So I'm going to change this to say click anywhere or press Y to return to the video to learn the correct answer.
and I'm just going to make the opacity of this 100% so it's a little bit easier to read. And I'm going to do that for all my captions. And I'll just realign those again. So that uh, that's pretty much set up the way you want it here. So uh, let's go through the properties panel or the quiz properties panel for this particular question. So it's, like I said, all I've done is I've added two additional answers just to round out this multiple choice question. I could choose to shuffle the answers or not, depending on what your preferences are. Um, certainly multiple answers would work. So if you wanted to have three or four or three, two or three correct answers and one or two wrong answers, that's fine too. Points uh, has no impact on that. I'm personally a fan of not numbering my multiple choice answers, uh, but that's entirely up to you. I've got the correct caption, the incomplete caption. You could add additional buttons. You could set time limits, whatever it is that you normally do with your quiz questions. So on success, we're going to say go to the next slide. I prefer this over continue because then it just seems to run a little bit faster. Uh, you could put in a number of attempts. I'm going to stick with one for now, but you could make two tries before remediation. The failure message, I've got one failure message, and like you saw, we edited that to make it clear that we're not going forward. Instead, we're going back to the video. And the last attempt, that's the action where, we'll, where we will return to that video. We're going to need to go to... Um, let's see here, jump to slide, and that's number two in this case. And that's it. So we're pretty much good to go. So let's just summarize again. So once you've watched the video, there will be a next button visible, and they'll be able to continue. Once they've started the quiz, and if they're unable to answer this correctly, they'll get a message that says uh, that they can try again by going back to the video and learning what was there. And this will jump back to the video. The return to quiz button will be there and it will return you back here. And unlike other situations where normally a quiz question is locked, this will be available for the user to answer again. So let's try this out. Let's just do a preview of this project in HTML5 and see how that works. So here we go. Here's our title slide. Let's click next to begin. And we have our little video here where we can watch that. Once we've gotten to the end of the video, we can click next. And we just get that little summary page. Are you ready for the quiz? Click next to begin. So here we go. Here's our multiple choice answer. I'm going to purposely get this wrong. I'm going to select LibreOffice as a possible answer. Hit submit and it says incorrect, click anywhere or press Y to return to the video to learn the correct answer. And I don't know why I have two periods there. So if I click this again, it returns me to the video. But what's different this time around is because of that CP info quiz scope, I now see my return to quiz button and I can press that button and I'm returned to the quiz. And of course, now I can make another selection uh, this time I'll get it correct. We'll hit submit, correct, click anywhere to continue. And of course, I get my quiz results. It doesn't show me a greater number of attempts because technically I never left the scope of the quiz. Uh, in this case here, I made one attempt. I had to do a little remediation and I returned and I was successful in the end. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.